DevX World, and I'm joined by two fellows from J&J. &J. I am Mualem and Nick Oketch. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. So we're talking about innovation and uh, young, uh, engaging with youth today. So I, I wanted to begin by asking you, as the co-founder of All Girls Code, um, could you explain a bit more about what your organization does in Lebanon and how, um, or what kind of impact that you've seen it have already on young women in your community? Of course. So thank you, Helen, for having us. Um, in general, with All Girls School and with all these STEM programs that we're running, uh, mentorship programs, uh, empowerment sessions, the direct impact that we've seen is that these girls, 90% of those who have graduated and are currently at university, are studying STEM-related majors, which uh, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. Now, the indirect impact, which is way more important to us, is that a lot of these girls have come to All Girls School with no prior knowledge about women empowerment, and they've thought that there are no women whatsoever in technology. So it's very inspiring to know that more than 90% have already gone on to start their careers in technology. And of course, in general, uh, we need a lot of uh, more women in technology because we need to produce uh, tech products that are way more um, diverse and that can target the whole community rather than just half of it because this field has been dominated by men for such a long time now. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, and Nick, in your work um, in Kenya, I was wondering if you could just explain a little bit more about what it is that you do in um, sexual and reproductive health programs and how you've leveraged um, technology and innovation in your work. I th uh, thank you for that question. Uh, b being a Women Deliver Young Leader 2016, I was privileged to interact with youths around the world, other young leaders around the world, who are doing some tremendous work. And so uh, when we sat down and we talked to them, we, de we, de we decided to design LucyBot. LucyBot is a, a chatbot that uh, works on artificial intelligence, which is fed with verified information from reliable sources like UNFPA website. So this is like a port full of food where youths can get information on sexual health rights. When they go, they just, they just search uh, LucyBot on Facebook Messenger, then they start interacting with it just like another friend. So when we're designing this, uh, we were thinking about apps and also chatbots. We find that uh, youth behavior with apps is really it's really like shaky because once they go uh, across the street and they want Uber, they want to download the app, they find not enough space, they will just, they will just have to remove another app. So we didn't want that. So that's why we decided to settle on a chatbot. A chatbot does not need any downloading, does not need any information. It's us as the innovators who are tasked with getting the information uh, to the app so that it's sophisticated as possible. So uh, we, are really, we are really grateful because the app has really doubled our impact in Kenya. Like uh, we designed that app uh, in, 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 August, uh, in August last year and up to now the reach has been so tremendous. Like we have reached uh, 2,500 youth who are engaging with the app. So uh, we see technology is the key to the future and this, this is the point where we can engage young people so that they are able to get this information. From, uh, the idea came from our research which we did in Kenya. We found that 50% of young people in Kenya own mobile phones, and these mobile phones can actually access network. So that's why we wanted to reach the youth where they are. Yeah. And could you share any lessons that you've learned about engaging young people and adolescents that you would share with our audience today? Uh, uh, embracing technology is, is, the, is the way to go, that, just like I had said earlier. Uh, you find that uh, using traditional methods are really effective. Like for example, we run a very innovative uh, project in Kenya called the Malkia Centers. Malkia is a Swahili word uh, which means divas. These are centers where young, young girls come and they do na their nails and also do their, their hair as they talk about men. They talk about their sexuality and also they can get services such as uh, birth control services and also get information on other issues like HIV and also we do some economic trainings in this program. So as much as these are also very effective, we feel that technology is the way to go. Yeah? Because you find that um, Malkia centers can reach like 80, 80 to 100 women uh, monthly. You find, and the technology, the Lucibo technology that, that we concurrently run can reach uh, over like um, over 100 or 200 women, young people monthly. And also you find that the technology can, can reach other young people across Kenya too. It's not area specific. Because the Malkia centers are located in Sierra County where I work. And the LucyBot is, run, is running on Facebook Messenger platform. We just know how huge the, the, the traffic of Facebook Messenger platform, over 1.3 billion users monthly. 
So this is our target market. So we find that youth interacting with the, with the chatbot are from Nairobi, come from Kisumu. Every youth that has Facebook Messenger in their phone in Kenya can access these services. So you can see the impact of technology in our work as, as, as opposed to the traditional methods, the Malkia Center traditional methods. Yeah. And, um, and I the same to you. Could you share any advice um, about or discuss any of the challenges that you've encountered with engaging young women and how you've actually managed to, to overcome that for impact? Of course. Uh, so as Nick mentioned, a very important method that we've used in order to get more women to join our programs is technology. It was very natural for us to try to reach out using social media platforms. And this is how we got uh, participants coming from abroad, from all over Lebanon, from tech-savvy cities and villages. And we also got refugees to attend, which was very interesting. Uh, what we done as well is that these girls they've come over to us and thought that there were no women technology whatsoever we've uh, allowed them to be introduced to women uh, leaders who have actually founded technology like Ada Lovelace like Grace Hopper and we've also connected them with Lebanese uh, women engineers uh, such as mentors and one problem that we've faced which we're currently working on overcoming is parents so we have two contrasting types of parents the very supportive feminist encouraging ones and the traditional ones who kind of prefer that their daughters stay at home rather than follow their ambitions. And uh, we're starting uh, reaching out to parents now as well to inform them that it is very important uh, for them to be as influential as possible when it comes to their uh, children's decisions, whatever ambitions they want to follow. Just be like as encouraging and as supportive as possible. Yeah, and you've touched on it already a bit there, um, but more broadly, how uh, can increased coding skills um, help to impact gender equality? Of course. So as I've mentioned uh, a bit earlier, we need uh, an increased representation of women in technology uh, because for so long there, there has been a lot of bias and prejudice in the tech products that have been produced uh, because, you know, this field has been dominated by men. So this may have been like coincidental or in purpose, we're not sure. So uh, having more women being represented in this field allows these women to produce uh, products that might be targeted towards women's issues, which has not been discussed previously. So even, uh, for example, with uh, what Nick mentioned, uh, their uh, chatbot Lucybot, um, you know, serves a lot uh, regarding women's issues as, as, as well as, uh, you know, little kids and males' issues. So uh, this is why we do need a lot of uh, more women in uh, technology in order to be sure that we're serving the community as a whole and not just a part of it like what has been happening previously. Absolutely. And, um, and so to both of you, um, what's your key call to action to young people about taking action at a community level? Maybe Nick, I'll start with you. Yeah, I feel uh, my main urge is to encourage youth that we are not the leaders of the future. We are the leaders of today. So like us now, we are designing programs that are impacting the lives of young people across Kenya and around the world. I'm calling upon young people to use their expertise and experiences to come up with pro uh, programs that are able to solve the overwhelming global healthcare problem. And my last advice is this, when they, assign, uh, when they are designing this program, they should have youth in mind. The program should fit perfectly into the lives of young people in the countries where they, they serve and down the line around the world. Yeah. And carrying on from what Nick mentioned, we should also be making sure that we're targeting all types of youth. So at All Girls School, as I mentioned, we're integrating refugees. So uh, we've seen really good results when we're trying to integrate our youth from rural areas, from cities, refugees as well. So my call to action for all young leaders around the world is to try to be as diverse as possible with the audiences that you're targeting and to just hang in there because change is very hard to sustain, but you know, it pays off at the end. Yeah, and do you have any words of encouragement or kind of any practical tips that you could share as well with either people in your communities or others around the world? Uh, so with my community, I'm definitely uh, calling on for more uh, women to mentor younger women, uh, to try to encourage girls to try technology. Uh, we're trying to reach out as much as possible, but of course, you know, word of mouth can definitely help. Yeah, to me, I think uh, what I think is true, and I think when, I'm, when I go back to Kenya, I will, uh, we will engage STEM in our activities. It's something that I think we should nurture from, from high school students or maybe primary school level students so that they can uptake the science subject. So that, that's where the innovations come from mostly, from the tech guys and everything, the guys from engineering field. And I think we should nurture them from their young ages. And we, that's something we are going to do when I go back to Kenya. 
Yeah. Thank you both so much for joining me and thanks for your really inspiring work Thank and you for so sharing much. with our audience as Thank well. You so much. Um, and so thanks for uh, watching and tune in for more at DevX World throughout the day.